Hello and welcome to the CPC Certification Review Training with Legacy. This training is designed to assist you in passing the CPC Certification Exam. This course is not designed for beginners. You should understand the coding process prior to taking this review. This section will have six questions on the 40,000 series CPT targeting surgical procedures performed on the digestive system, which will focus on these areas lips, mouth, palate, and uvula, salivary glands and ducts, pharynx, adenoids, and tonsils, esophagus, stomach, intestines, appendix, rectum, anus, liver, biliary tract, pancreas, abdomen, peritoneum, and omentum. The digestive system is a complex system of organs and structures responsible for breaking down food into smaller molecules that can be absorbed and used by the body. The major organs of the digestive system include the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestines, large intestines, rectum, and anus. The anatomy of the digestive system is critical to correct code selection. Many of the codes will depend on how far the provider went into the digestive system. There are additional organs that are vital to the digestive system. The pancreas is both an endocrine and exocrine. It is an endocrine as it secretes the hormone insulin into the bloodstream. It is an exocrine as it secretes digestive enzymes into the duodenum to assist with digestion. The liver is the largest organ and gland in the body. It has numerous vital functions, including storage of glucose, vitamins, excretion of bilirubin, cholesterol and drugs, metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins and fats, detoxification of drugs and other harmful substances. The gallbladder is a storage place for bile, which is secreted by the liver. Bile has many digestive functions and empties into the duodenum. Diagnosis codes related to the digestive system are found throughout ICD-10-CM. The codes from Chapter 11 do not have any chapter-specific guidelines. Most of the guidelines are very straightforward. Examples of the variety of diagnoses found that relate to the digestive system include esophagitis, which is inflammation of the esophagus, esophageal varices, which are enlarged veins in the esophagus, hiatal hernia, which occurs when the upper portion of the stomach bulges through the diaphragm. I would take a moment to look up some of the other diseases listed on this slide for further clarification. Inflammatory bowel disease describes disorders with chronic inflammation of the digestive tract. There are many conditions that fall under this title. Irritable bowel syndrome is a disease of which the large intestines can cause cramps, diarrhea, pain, bloating, etc. It's also known as IBS. Foreign body removal from the digestive tract is also common to find here. Diverticulosis and diverticulitis are similar disorders. Diverticulosis occurs when pockets form in the digestive tract. These pockets can retain stool. When the pouches become infected or inflamed, the condition is called diverticulitis. Moving further through the gastrointestinal tract, rectal prolapse occurs when the rectum slides out of the anus, turning it inside out. An abscess is a swollen area within body tissue containing pus. Abscesses can happen anywhere through the body. Hemorrhoids are swollen veins in the anus and rectum. Hemorrhoids can be found both internal and external. An anal fissure is a small tear in the lining of the anus that can occur most commonly with a bowel movement. An anal fistula is an abnormal passageway from the anus to the skin around it. Many GI procedures are performed via endoscope. An endoscope is similar to a laparoscope. Endoscopy allows for visualization of a hollow organ via a scope. Endoscopy can be done both diagnostic and therapeutic. 
As a reminder, when a diagnostic endoscopic service is converted to a surgical service, then only the surgical code is reported. Vermilionectomy is excision of the red or lipstick region of the upper and lower lips. This is different from a chylioplasty, which is a plastic surgery of the lips. Look carefully at the codes for repair of cleft lip. Some report unilateral procedures and others are used for bilateral procedures. There are parenthetical instructions to be reviewed for these codes as well. The vestibule of the mouth is the space between the cheek, lips, and teeth. It is also called the buccal cavity. A vestibuloplasty is a plastic repair performed in the vestibule of the mouth. A glossectomy is removal of the tongue. Code selection is based on the amount of the tongue and additional tissue removed. Palatoplasty is a plastic repair or reconstruction on the palate of the mouth in a patient with a cleft palate. Palatine tonsils are removed with a tonsillectomy. They are found at the opening of the oral cavity into the pharynx. Adenoids are pharyngeal tonsils located near the opening of the nasal cavity in the upper pharynx. When enlarged, the adenoids may interfere with breathing. Removal is an adenoidectomy. The age of the patient is also a factor in code selection. Another factor for code selection is whether it is primary or secondary, meaning the tissue has grown back. A pharyngoplasty is the surgical repair of the pharynx. This procedure is plastic surgery of the pharynx and can involve flaps from the mucous membranes, tongue, and tissue near the area of the defect. Esophagoscopy is direct visualization of the esophagus that does not extend into the stomach. In this section, it is important to pay attention to the parent codes for each code. Be careful because there are numerous code with the common portion of the procedure followed by several indented procedures. For example, code 43200 is esophagoscopy, rigid or flexible, diagnostic, followed by 18 indented codes. Read these carefully to make sure you've selected the appropriate code. Some of these codes do not include imaging guidance. There are a variety of endoscopic approaches, such as rigid transoral, flexible transnasal, and flexible transoral. When coding for esophagoscopy, it is important to know the procedure performed, such as biopsy, removal of foreign body, submucosal injection, etc. Esophago-gastro-duodenoscopy, or EGD procedures, include visualization of the esophagus, stomach, and the proximal duodenum, or jejunum. If the physician does not report an exam of the proximal duodenum or jejunum, append modifier 52, reduced procedure to the appropriate code if repeat examination is not planned, or modifier 53 if repeat examination is planned. The discovery of gastric polyps during an endoscopic examination of the stomach is a relatively common occurrence for gastroenterologists. While coding for EGD polyps, it is important to know if they were treated with ablation or removal. ERCP uses a combination of endoscopy and fluoroscopy to diagnose and or treat the biliary or pancreatic ductal systems for problems such as gallstones, inflammatory strictures, leaks, and malignancies. Coding for ERCP requires you to know if this is with ablation biopsy, with collection of specimen, with exchange, with placement, with removal, or with destruction. A gastrectomy is the removal of all or part of the stomach. Code selection is based on whether the all or part of the stomach is removed and by other procedures done at the same time. Bariatric procedures are surgeries to assist in weight loss by changing the anatomy of the stomach and intestines to limit the amount of food that can be eaten and digested. There are services performed both endoscopically and open. 
When gastric restriction devices are placed, there are codes for the insertion, removal, replacement, and adjustment of the device. Bariatric surgery and gastric bypass are performed to treat morbid obesity. There are several procedures such as Roux-en-Y and banding and several approaches. Laparoscopic gastric restrictive procedures are reported using 43644 through 43645 and 43770 through 43775. Open gastric restrictive procedures and bypass surgeries are reported using 43842 through 43848. Intralysis is the freeing of intestinal adhesions. There are also several procedures for exploration of different parts of the intestinal tract, which include biopsies and removal of foreign bodies. The endoscopy category in the digestive system consists of codes to report diagnostic or surgical procedures on the small intestine and stomal endoscopies. Make sure to note if the code begins through a stoma. These procedures are used to report the removal of a foreign body, ablation of tumors, and biopsies. Make sure to note in the operative report whether the procedure is performed through a stoma. Also note how far the scope is done. Interostomy is a procedure to make a hole or a passageway from the skin into a portion of the patient's small intestines. They may be placed temporarily or permanently to allow for drainage or for placement of a tube for feeding. Codes for the rectum include incision, excision, and endoscopy. The incision category contains codes for drainage of the abscesses. The excision category includes codes for excision of the rectum, also known as a proctectomy. Proctectomy codes are differentiated by partial or complete, as well as other procedures that may be performed at the same time. Rectal endoscopies are divided based on the extent and purpose of the procedure. Proctosigmoidscopy is the examination of the rectum and the sigmoid colon. Sigmoidscopy is an examination of the sigmoid colon and may include the descending colon. Colonoscopy is the examination of the colon from the rectum to the cecum and may include the ileum. Each type of endoscopy has indented codes based on the purpose such as biopsy, foreign body removal, etc. See the decision tree table in the CPT for assistance in code selection and modifiers to report for incomplete services. The codes in the anus section begin with treatment for abscesses of the anus, which are usually treated with IND. The other section covers treatment of hemorrhoids. Codes are selected based on whether the hemorrhoids are external or internal, as well as the complexity and if other procedures were performed during the same operation. On your screen, you will see the definition of various types of endoscopies found in the GI section. Please take a moment to review. The codes for the liver includes codes for liver transplantation, as well as procedures for liver biopsy and laparoscopy procedures. Liver transplantation codes are also found in this section. There are important guidelines to follow when using these codes. The transplant involves several physicians and a trained surgical team. The procedure involves obtaining the graft to be transplanted from a cadaver or living donor, back bench work, and transplantation into the recipient. Each component should be coded separately. The biliary tract connects the gallbladder to the liver and the small intestines. It is a common site for calculus and tumors that may obstruct the flow of bile. The incision category includes codes to explore the tract and may include removal of calculus or drainage of bile. An injection may be necessary to find out if the biliary tract is obstructed. The pancreas is a large gland located behind the stomach. There are only a few codes in the pancreas section for the codes for incision, excision, and repair. The pancreas can be totally or partially removed. These codes are divided based on the extent of the removal and other procedures that may have been done at the same operative session. 
The pancreas transplantation codes include harvesting the pancreas graft from a cadaver, backbench work in preparation for transplant, and transplant of the graft into the recipient. The abdomen, peritoneum, and omentum subheading contains the code for an exploratory laparotomy, codes for drainage of peritoneal, subdiaphragmic, and retroperitoneal abscesses are selected based on if they are completed by open procedure or percutaneously. The percutaneous procedures instruct the coder on the use of radiological supervision and interpretation codes. The laparoscopy codes are used to report a surgical laparoscopy. Code 49320 is used to report a diagnostic laparoscopy of the abdomen, peritoneum, and omentum. A laparoscopy that includes surgical procedures such as biopsy or insertion of a catheter. 2023 brings major revision to the abdominal hernia codes to bundle epigastric, incisional, ventral, umbilical and spalenal hernias into combination codes depending on whether the hernias are initial or recurrent, reducible or incarcerated, and size of the hernias being repaired. When a Medicare patient is screened for a malignant neoplasm of the GI tract, Medicare utilizes different codes which are found in HCPCS level 2. Codes G0104 through G0106 and G0120 through G0122 are used when performing a sigmoidscopy, colonoscopy, or barium enema when screening for GI malignancies on Medicare patients. Here's a coding tip. Cross-reference these codes in the CPT book with the colonoscopy codes. Thank you for joining us for this review. If you would like more details about our intensive CPC training or any of our other training programs, please visit our website at medicalbillco.com.